A blessed morning once again, everyone. Welcome to another beautiful live broadcast. This is our prayer, prophetic prayer school. This is uh, the voice of Isaiah Phillips at King Tola. This morning, we want to welcome everyone that will be connecting and joining us to pray this morning to seek the heart of the Father, to seek the mind of the Lord, and of course, the directions of the Spirit for this brand new day. This is the day of the Lord. We have entered into a deeper reality of the manifestation of the day of the Lord. And we are beginning to see some of the activities and the, and the realities of that which uh, uh, is required for us, amen, to be able to function within this new day. Uh, I want to pray this morning that once again, as we join our hearts together and connect with the heartbeat of the Lord, that we will be able to corporately you know, move in, in the spirit and through the spirit as we continue to pray, amen, that his kingdom be manifest in our day. Uh, this morning, by the grace of God, we're going to uh, look into a different direction that uh, I sense the spirit of God is emphasizing. A couple of things um, that the spirit of the Lord is unpacking and revealing to us. And we are tracking, we continue to track the heart of the Lord so we can maintain the directions and the leading of the Spirit in terms of what we are seeing, amen, on, uh, being unpacked in our time. Uh, it's my prayer that we will not pray amiss, that we will not allow even the, the, you know, the circumstances around us to derail our focus in terms of what the Spirit of God is emphasizing for this brand new day. All right. Uh, so I believe this morning once again that the Lord will give us clarity. He will give us a, a, a direction and give us, you know, guidance through His Word. I, I believe the Holy Spirit will continue to help us to press further, Amen, into the deep things of the Spirit, and uh, we'll be able to unveil, unveil that, Amen, and reveal that to our generation, to our community, to our society, the body of Christ, and of course to the nation. So. Welcome this morning and join me as we join you with the Lord this morning. Uh, we're going to pray, but before we pray, I want to read the scripture all right, just to give us a kind of a foundation this morning. In uh, Ephesians chapter 1, here's what Paul says in, in verse 15. He says, for this reason, there's a reason why we must pray. We've got to have a reason. We've got to have a clarity. We've got to know why we're doing what we're doing. He said, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints... I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Remember you in my prayers. You can see that prayer, the word prayer there is plural. So there are all kinds of prayers that, of course, our Apostle Paul was uh, engaging in you know, for the people, for the body, for the community. He said, for I have kept asking, I've kept asking, this is very important, I've kept asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. All right? I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order. The reason why Paul is praying that the eyes of understanding may be enlightened. He says, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. I sense this is something that we also need to zero into in our time in our day this is something we need to look into <clears throat> remember we have said <clears throat> excuse me we've said the prayer right, is is a portal to understanding the things of the spirit prayer is a portal the prayer is is a gateway into the activities into the in, into the prophetic uh, 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 dimension into the the womb of the spirit into amen, a dimension called amen the third heaven the third order of the things of god Prayer brings us before the throne. Prayer is 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 a is a vehicle that brings us before the very presence of God. Thank you for connecting those connecting with us. All right, thank you so much. All right, prayer is is a vehicle that connects us with the things of the Spirit. And when we get into the place of prayer, we begin to interact. <clears throat> Excuse me. We begin to interact with the activities of the Spirit or with the activities of God. It's in the place of prayer that understanding and spiritual reality becomes even more clear and manifest. Somebody, I had a visitor yesterday and, and, and this person was asking, say, how do you, how do you get to know or understand spiritual things? How do you, you know, begin to you know, understand the substance of the spirit. And, and, and I mean, this is a very important question that sometimes you find a bit difficult to answer because uh, 
to be able to answer this kind of uh, uh, you know question, you you need to you need to take the person into the spirit. You know, certain things you cannot really explain. You have to bring the people to see for themselves. As as much as I try, you know, in my own you know way and words, sometimes word actually fails us to convey the heart or the mind of God. You know, in relating to the context of what the person is asking sometimes we think that we have actually answered people's question but we've not because uh, uh, only them actually understand what they are seeking to 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 know and to understand you know to to hear all right yes questions sometimes can be very vague and sometimes you know we we can be we, you know the truth can be shrouded in 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 a question that we don't know how to how to how to convey how to you know how how to relay but i try my possible best all right to help this person to to see into what the spirit of the lord is saying but but i, I believe that until we begin to trust the lord and, and and develop that spirit of faith and 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 quest in the things of god if there's no passion to want to know to want to grow to want to press into all right what the lord has given to us <clears throat> it will be very difficult for us to you know to know and to understand certain things all right knowledge in the things of the spirit is totally different from how we understand knowledge from our natural, you know, you know, uh, human sense. All right, spiritual things are, are impregnated into our heart. How we know things in the spirit, they're like, you know, uh, they, they, you know, they're like, they're like a an imprint. You, you, you just have this knowledge. It is an awakening. It's like you're, you're, you're being awakened into something. It's like you're blind. Suddenly, they open your eyes to see things, and you just, you just know them. You know them because, you know, that's what they have imprinted into your spirit. How we get to know them, of course, has to do with us submitting to the leading, to the guidance, to the instruction, amen, of the word of God. Because the word of God is the gateway. When we have God's word in our heart, amen, and we take that word in the place of prayer. All right? I was sharing with my wife yesterday while she was asking me a question. And I said one of the easiest way or one of the simplest and the most, you know, if you will, the, the most straight way to pray is to take the word of God and pray it back, amen, to God. Or take that to which heaven has spoken. You know, sometimes the Lord drops a word in your heart or it can even be a dream, can be, a, you know, uh, in a, a voice you heard or it can be something, all right, that the spirit of God impresses in your heart. Now you take that and you pray that back to God. I mean, that is a beautiful place to be because it's from there that they begin to give you understanding and begin to expand, amen, what they want you to know or what they want you to understand understand so that is to me something that you know we need to develop uh, it, particularly in the days that we live in because many of the things that will be happening to you know people that is already happening across the globe within our own space amen we may not have a clear understanding of what the lord is saying but if we take those things amen and begin to pray them of course in alignment with god's word all right in in in, in guidance to what the spirit of god amen as as you know is emphasizing in the word those things will begin to come to us with clearer and a better understanding. Now, I, I want to share one or two things, you know, uh, with us as we continue to, you know, delve into uh, the, the the directions of God and and the and the prophetic manifestation of what we would define as, Amen. The comings of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is coming, and we've said this several times that whenever we Tap, we step into this order of the manifestation of the comings of the kingdom. Many things are going to be happening on diff, different levels. Okay, God speaks to us on various levels. God speaks to us on various, uh, you know, you know, platforms. If I if, if I may put it that way, God speaks to us on the various platforms. I, I, and and I'm not just speaking about God speaking generally to the body, even to us. When God speaks to you, God may be saying something to you specifically from various levels. Thank you, Sister Myrtle. For connecting god will be speaking to you amen about certain area of your life then if you if you will hear and and, and incline your ears you'll be hearing something else all right god will be, god may be touching something else so god can be saying five things to you at the same time <clears throat> you know david said once the lord spoke twice have i heard that all power belongs to god there's that capacity in the things of god that can you know can 
can multiply. There's, the, there's that reality in the things of the Spirit that when you hear God, you can be hearing five things at the same time. Now, it is often difficult for us to process amen, what the Spirit of God is saying to us. We have not developed that capacity where we can where we can hear the voice of God and out of that voice, amen, we can pick, you know, five, six, seven things, eight things, nine things at, at a time. So I have come to that, you know, understanding that, you know, God doesn't just speak to one area at a goal. God can, one word can be ministering to various areas. Just like when we hear, we receive a prophecy or we're hearing a prophecy, okay? There's the tendency that most time we want to limit what we have heard amen, just to one area because we are limited in our understanding. Thank you so much, uh, a man of God this morning, Pastor Akin, for connecting. Really appreciate it, sir. All right? We, we can be so deceived, all right, because our, our mindset, our concept of interpreting the things of the Spirit most time are, are very shallow and narrow-minded. We have to develop amen, the ability to to have that multi-dimension, multi, you know, uh, 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 capacity, all right, in in the speakings of God. God speaks, but we have to know, amen, how to <clears throat> how to relay and interpret what the Spirit of God is saying to various. Because once God speaks, amen, you can be rest assured that the that voice, amen, is going to touch different aspects of your life, different dimensions of your life. And that is something we have to, <clears throat> excuse me, we have to develop as, as, you know, as a spiritual culture that you want to hear the voice of God in the various areas of your life. You want to be able to pick, amen, the sound of God. When You see, when a sound comes, that sound is made up of various wavelengths, okay? That sound is made up of various wavelengths. You, you've got to be able to pick each wavelength, all right? So that you, you are able to relate that word, let's say to your own person life you, you can relate that word maybe to your business to your family life to your you know a uh, uh, um place maybe as a man as a woman all right because god god god's word has the ability to touch you know one word has the ability to touch to touch different area different aspect of our life all right but that's not my focus this morning we're going to, we're going to deal with that all right as we deal with you know uh, as we continue in our prophetic school which I, i'm believing god that we'll be able to do be able to start again or at this end of this week okay is the, the problem the one of the reasons why i've not been able to start it again is because we've been having problem with the internet connectivity and things like that so because when we start i, I don't want something that would distract us i just want us to continue and flow and uh, the, the lord has been speaking because we need to really revamp and develop amen our state of spirituality in terms of understanding god his ways his wills amen his counsel how does god speak to us on a personal level amen on a corporate level what is god saying amen on an international global level all right we've got to have that capacity so we are not moved we are well informed amen and we're well positioned to interpret what the spirit of god is saying because how we hear god amen would define how we respond to life how we respond to situations to challenges to to people amen to you know to 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 needs amen how we press for that how we position ourselves and and align our heart amen towards that which the spirit of god amen is proclaiming and declaring thank you so much sister tina for connecting also all right <clears throat> excuse me oh thank you jesus so Paul is saying something here, all right? I'm reading Ephesians. I'm going to read Ephesians again because this kind of give us a foundation. Remember that we're talking about prayer, all right? We're, this is our prophetic, you know, our, our, our school of prayer, all right? Where we learn how to pray. How to pray is beyond just we mumbling words, all right? We've got to come into agreement with God. We've got to come into agreement, amen, with what the Spirit of God is emphasizing. We have to understand, <clears throat> excuse me, the nature of the days that we, that we live in our prayer must be relevant to the nature of the days that we live in days not just limited to all right the the events happening but days in terms of the days of god the speakings of god amen the operations of god amen the demand of god amen the counsels of god this the, the the ways of god in the earth all right there is something called the ways of god the movement of god in the earth all right many of us all right we, we grow up not really having a clear a better you know mature understandings of the ways of God so when God even come to us when God speaks to us we always interpret or try to look at what the Spirit of God is saying based on how we have been introduced to God all right and most time that doesn't really help us so there has to be if you will you know a, a place where we can re be reorientated our understanding about the things of God I had a chat with a friend yesterday from America who called me my God we had such a you know a wonderful you know long chat I mean I I just thought it was just gonna call and 
we just, you know, chat for a few minutes, but we began to look at what God is saying, you know, regarding even the coronavirus and what is, you know, the heart of God, what's the mind of God, how do we interpret these days? I mean, and it's such an amazing time. You know, the Bible says... <clears throat> We speak wisdom among them that are mature. When you connect with people who are spiritual, who are hungry for the things of God, who are who, who are you know you know uh, uh, searching and who are also pursuing, all right, the, the the heartbeat of God. It's amazing how God just opened things to us, and you begin to. I mean, that is what we call you know spiritual relationship, because then God can begin to. Bible says the deep calls to the deep, all right. So so I'm believing God that we'll be able to develop that kind of spiritual interaction that we will speak you know spiritual deep things to each other and be able to impregnate our hearts amen with the speakings of god with the, imp with the impressions of god with the demand of god amen so that we can all grow thereby yes that's what the bible says that is there has to be a mutual development that's my plan that's my desire that we all grow up amen and become and come into that you know uh, uh if you will that that spiritual status in christ jesus we're coming to a place in christ amen that is called you know spiritual maturity that we may all grow up together into the full stature that's why you know the, the ministry gift have been given to us okay and we're tapping into that we're looking into that we're pressing into that we're growing we're coming to the place of spiritual maturity corporately all right so paul said in ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 again he said for this reason so there's a reason why we do what we do and with that reason must be clear it must be clear because it's that reason that will be leading us further it is that reason that will keep us in the days of contradiction it is that reason that will keep us aligned amen when every other thing amen is falling apart you got to know reason why we do what we do there's a reason why we pray there's a reason why i'm here this morning all right to impart your life amen to edify the body amen to see that we continue to have a clearer and a better perspective regarding the speakings of god the demand of god all right that our body our flesh amen <clears throat> that how we feel how we woke up should not define our emotions should not define how we engage with god amen we have to have a reason when you have a reason emotion can be disciplined when we have a reason amen vision can be aligned because indeed reason comes from vision all right so paul said for this reason ever since i heard about your faith in the lord he's talking about the efficient church now you will understand why paul amen you know built such a powerful spiritual edifice among amen the efficient church because something about this efficient church triggered amen a release of of, of spiritual you know gift and grace amen to you know to the community and if you further read the book of Revelation, you will notice that the first church Jesus spoke to was the church of Ephesus. This is important, all right? That there is a kind of a, a, a response system that we can present to God, amen, that, 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 that kind of make God to look at us, amen, as, as special. In other words, God can say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make you, amen, my garrison. I'm going to make you, amen, my depot. I'm going to make you, amen, my, my place of releasing things into the earth. There are certain people today, while God speaks to the entire world and God speaks to everybody, but whenever God wants to speak, there are certain people that picks it first. There are certain people that God visit first, all right? God was going to judge, amen, a city, amen. He had to, he had to pick a visit amen to the house of abraham there are certain people in the earth whose life amen they are portals they are gates amen they are the place of the movement of god in the earth amen i call them amen places where you find amen the speakings of god they they they, they live within the earth but their dimension of oppression amen is in the heavens all right so if if we develop ourselves and and we quest for this kind of reality god can bring us there all right no no there's no there, it's not it's not like some some people are specially chosen no it's a quest it's a desire if you if you desire it you can you can you can become the house of god after all amen? david was the house of god in fact the bible talk about us god god restoring the house of david the tabernacle of david there's something about david's life amen that 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 reflect what god is looking for what god is searching for why? Because the heart of David, amen, connect to God, all right? Uh, when we talk about the heart of David, we're not just talking about, you know, seeking God today and tomorrow, you don't know. No, the Bible says, I have found a man whose heart is after me. The heart of God, amen, 
turn the life of David to become the house of God. The heart of David, amen, turn the life, amen, of David to become the house of God in the earth. In other words, whenever God wants to speak, whenever God wants to do something, amen, among his people, it goes via what is called the house of David, the heart of David, amen. When God finds your heart, amen, he deposits his intentions, he deposits, amen, his, his counsel, his purposes, amen, that whenever people come to your stream, they can drink from that stream, they can hear from God. All right. When, whenever people come across your path, amen. There's something that your spirit deposited in, in deposits in them that changes them, that empowers them. All right. What am I saying this morning? I'm, 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 I'm challenging us, amen, to, you know, to, 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 to step up, you know, our passion, our walk, amen, our understanding about the things of the spirit. But let me continue so that I don't get distracted from this uh, explanation. He said, for, 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 for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love. Okay, so faith goes before love. All right, it takes it takes it takes it takes faith to love God. Uh, you see, this is biblical interpretation now. All right, it takes faith to love God. Love doesn't come first. No, if you want to love God, you have to have faith. All right, but because how do you begin to love a God you don't see? How do you love a God you can't feel? All right, how do you you know our definition of of love is so far away from how God defines love. It takes faith, amen. Everything that God does are done by faith, amen. We love God by faith, amen. We connect to Him by faith, amen. We interact with Him by faith. Faith is the substance; is a spiritual substance. Faith is a substance of the things, amen, that we do not see. We can't see, but it's a substance. All right, so spiritual things. This is what I was also explaining to the brother that came visiting yesterday. I said, faith, amen, is a spiritual substance. You know, there is a there is a there is a dimension called amen, the third world, the, excuse me, the third heaven. In in heaven, heaven is a reality. But the reality of heaven is not like how we define human, human fleshy reality. All right. Remember that all that we define to be life today, amen, a product of the fall, a product of, amen, the fallen Adamic nature. Adam fell into his soulish life. So all of the things that we embrace, we love, we celebrate, all right, we pursue are all from, amen, the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But for, for those who are partakers, hallelujah, of the tree of life, you will discover that you will know the things of God. The things of God will become so so easy to understand because you are feeding, amen, from that tree. You're feeding from life, amen. You're not feeding from, you know, a dead fruit. You're not feeding from that which is carnal, that which is fleshy, that which is soulish, you know. The, 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 all the product of that which, amen, defines the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, amen, is basically sensual. Now, you cannot live in the sensual realm and think you're going to appreciate or, or even celebrate the things of God. That's why the things of God are not, are not attractive to certain people. All right? When you find the things of God not attractive to you, you find yourself, amen, in a situation where you are the tug of war. Right? You are in between two. Which, which, which to choose? Should I choose the way of God or the way of my desire? All right? And you find yourself tilting towards your own desire. It shows that you have not come to... A position of what faith is in terms of the love of God, because when you love, of, when when the love of God begins to overwhelm your life, Amen. It pushes you to begin to celebrate. That's why you discover that many a times we want to do the things of God. Like Paul said, I really desire the ways of God. He said, but there is another law at work in me. All right, the law of sin and death, the law of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. He said that law always bring me back. Amen. To surrender, to submit to my own ways, to my own flesh amen that law amen you have to overpower it listen to these friends listen to this 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 is this is a powerful statement i'm about to make that law amen you cannot cast it out that law you cannot eradicate it but you can superimpose another law over it in other words for you to overcome the law of sin and death amen you have to perpetually live your life within the law of life and to live within the law of life you have to live within what is called feeding amen on the fruit of the tree of life that that tree you've got to love it you've got to if there's anything you're going to hear from what i'm saying this morning is that you must be a lover amen of the fruit of the tree of life you eat of it what you eat of that fruit amen <clears throat> remember it's a fruit the life of God, amen, doesn't just happen to us. 
<laughs> the life of God doesn't just happen to us. Amen. You, 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 you partake of something that is called fruits. It is that fruit that produces life. It's just like a, you know, you get your, your orange juice, your, you know, your, your fruit, your normal natural fruit. What do you do? You squeeze the juice. Amen. You have to squeeze that thing. If you don't squeeze it, you have to blend it. You understand? Then you get the juice. Amen. Yes, that's how it works. You have to, you have to, you have to feed on him. Jesus said, if you don't feed on me, you have no part in me. They say, we can't eat you. We can't, no, no, we don't. What are you saying, Jesus? They tried to interpret spiritual things with kind of mind. The Bible says they left him because Jesus invited them. He said, come eat of me. Come drink of me. He's not obviously talking about eating of his flesh. <laughs> I mean, who wants to give him his flesh to be eaten? No, he's saying something that you've got to come deeper into me. You've got to come into a reality of who I am, my life. You've got to, you've got to seek me more than any other thing. Eat of me, drink of me. Yes, the Bible says we must desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. Yes. When you desire the milk, you have to grow from that milk, amen, to meat. When you desire, you begin to eat the meat, amen, you, you begin to eat the bread. When you eat the bread, you eat, amen, what is called the wine of the spirit. All of this are part of, remember, wine, amen, is made out of fruit, out of fruit, yes, out of fruit. Something must happen to that, to, you know, to that grape, to, to that grape, amen. They have to squeeze out the, you know, the juice. Then you drink of it, then something begins to happen. Is it that it intoxicates you, amen, amen, towards the things of the spirit? Or you understand, or it transforms your life. That's if you're drinking from the wine of life. But if you're drinking the other intoxicated, ungodly wine, you know what that does too. All right. So that thing takes over your life. It takes control. It influences you. That's what I'm talking about. So we've got to understand what you know Paul is saying here. That these people they have a desire, they have a passion <clears throat> for God. All right. It says, it says, it says uh, in verse 17 of that Ephesians, it says, I have kept asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give to you the spirit. Spirit may give to you the spirit, may give to you the spirit, may give to you the spirit, may give to you the spirit. All right, so you can read the word of God until you grow blue in the face. But if the spirit of the word, amen, has not been lifted out of the word, amen, and imparted into your spirit, man, amen, you do not understand, you do not have what is called the spirit of the word. Many read the word of God, amen, and all they have, amen, is bunch of words, bunch bunch of rhetorics, amen. They can explain, they can talk about about it you understand they can express it all right we can put all kinds of lingua and, and all kinds of expression and semantics to it and they sound very intellectual intellectual capacity amen it's not the expression of the word of god the word of god is life jesus says the word that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life it is from this point that i speak i speak from the position of life so that when we when we speak amen situation cannot but to respond just like i was explaining to this brother i was sharing with yesterday jesus said if you have faith amen like a monster seed you can say to this mountain so jesus was Using a physical mountain, amen, to depict something in the spirit, amen, that respond, hallelujah, to challenges, that respond, amen, to, you know, to, you know, to, you know, to, you know, to, to the, to the authority of God's word. He's saying to his disciples, if only you can have faith, like a monster seed, all right, the size of your faith is, is, in, is, is not the issue, all right, if you have faith like a monster seed, that's enough, that's enough. If you have faith like a monster seed, all right, and that faith is, 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 is pure, that's the, that's that's what we're looking for is the purity of the faith. Hallelujah. Is the purity. If you have a pure faith, like a monster seed, you can say, because wherever you find faith in operation, there is the declaration. There's a declaration because faith, amen, is the product of the realities of God. Faith, amen, is the product of the realities of God. Amen. Faith is part of the constitutions of God. Amen. Whenever you want to talk, talk, talk about God, touch the things of God, relate with the things of God, amen, do the things of God, you must have faith. The Bible says whatever we do outside faith is sin. Sin means is rejected, it's not accepted. Hallelujah. Whatever we do outside faith is rejected. Amen. Faith is, is, is the spiritual currency. Amen. That, 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 that we use when it comes to the things of God, the things of the kingdom. We use faith. Amen. If you don't have faith, you will never be able to understand the things of God. That's why I said, you see, if you don't have faith, you can't love God. 
All right, because you'll be trying to love God sensually. You'll be trying to do, you know, love God with your heart, with your with your mind, a mind that has not been renewed, transformed, reformed, empowered, amen, energized, amen, by, by the things of God. Our walk with, with God, amen, has to do with faith, amen, is, is connected by faith. And once we have faith and you approach God by faith, you will notice that wherever you have faith, you will have boldness, you will have courage. Whenever there is faith, there is, co there is courage, there is boldness, amen. There is there is strength, amen. You 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 there is belief. Is it because faith and belief are two different things? Faith, amen, is trusting in God, trusting in his word, trusting, amen, in his values. Hallelujah. Faith produces belief. If you don't have faith, you cannot believe. A lot of people are trying to believe. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, the man say, Help my own belief. You know why he said help my own belief? Because he doesn't have faith. He doesn't have faith because faith is not something you buy in the market. You don't get it somewhere. No, you have to trust God for faith to be deposited in you. You see, faith and trust are two different things. Faith comes because you trust God. All right. And when you trust God, such, something begins to grow in your heart. It's called faith. That's why they talk about also the gift of faith. That gift of faith allows you to do supernatural things. You know, people like, you know, uh, 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 Smith Wigglesworth and, and the rest who perform miracle in their day, in their time. You know, people like, you know, uh, uh, Paul and, 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 and Peter who shadow heal people. Those were operations of the gift of faith. Amen. But there is a gift amen, of faith that there is a there's a faith that we have just to walk with God. Amen. He that must come to believe. Excuse me. He that must come to God must believe that time. That word believe is faith. Must have faith. Either must come to God, must have faith. That's why the foolish will never, the foolish will never accept the things of God. You know, when you say somebody is foolish, it means that person is depending on his on his or her own sensual, sensual knowledge. You know, that is foolishness. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Because God doesn't live, amen, in the in the in the elemental material world. Even though everything that you see, amen, that is element, that is material, that is substance, amen, came from God. Everything is created by God. But you see, somebody who is highly intellectual, who has studied so much, and who has not been developed and grown in an environment of, of trusting and believing God, all right, just look at things and say, how can you be so foolish? and believe in something you cannot see well what kind of a life is that all right that's not foolishness all right because faith is not vague all right faith only connects you to a realm hallelujah that is beyond your sensory faculty hallelujah that is beyond your mental faculty all right so when you look at all the things that men are running around that people are hitting their head all all around amen how do we find solution to you know this problem you know you know like this coronavirus thing now if people are you know so much money is being pumped into how do we find a vaccine huh? all people need to do is to pray god give us a vaccine show us you know god can do that Yes, God will use your capacity in, in the laboratory in, in as a scientist. You know, I mean, I've read about some Christian, you know, scientists who God has given breakthrough, breakthrough. Yes, because that's what God does. When we trust God, when we depend on God when we when we put our hope in him hallelujah and we say Lord we need direction regarding this thing we need solution we want to help the world we want amen this thing to to prove again because whatever whenever things happen in the natural human realm I want to tell you one thing is because God God wants to take the glory so we've got to find how to connect amen to the things of God in order to be able to express his glory even in this coronavirus thing amen God wants to get the glory God wants to get the glory amen God, God is bringing the world into a, a place of divine equilibrium. No one in this last day will be able to get the glory. We've been talking about that, but that is not my focus this morning. All right, I, I, I'm challenging us to see something. All right, to understand something that is time for us, Amen, to press in into the things of God. All right, it, let, let's read on verse 17. I keep asking. I'm reading Ephesians chapter one, verse 17. I keep asking that the God. That, 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 that the Lord God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the glorious Father may give to you the spirit, may give, it must be given, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Wisdom, wisdom. The know-how. You know what is behind. You have a technical know-how of how things happen, of how things operate. All right, But revelation brings you to the place where you see the way God sees. 
That's revelation. You see things the way God sees. It's called revelation. Amen. You have insight into life, into situation. All right. It, it, that revelation, wisdom and revelation, amen, are the operations of what you call the prophetic spirit. Whenever you talk about being prophetic, whenever you talk about amen, prophetic life, operating in the prophetic, you've got to have this too, amen, their husband and wife. You can't separate them, amen. Wisdom and revelation or wisdom and understanding. Another word, amen, for revelation, you can say spiritual understanding, all right, because they bring you to see what is behind, all right. They invite you to see certain things. They say, come up higher, let's show you, amen. Yes, a wisdom and revelation. It says, so that you may what? Know, so that you may know. You see, that's the product, amen. When you, when you add wisdom and revelation together, it brings divine knowledge. So you can know him better. So you may know him better. When we know God, we begin to know ourselves. When we know God, we begin to know how to pray. When we know God, we begin to know how to interact with life. When we know God, we begin to know how to interact with people. When we know God, we begin to know how to, you know, affect, hallelujah, the things of God within society. When we know God, we know how to evangelize, amen? All right, because a lot of time, we don't know how to, you know, interpret the things of the Spirit. We don't know how to communicate the things of the Spirit. But when we know God, God himself will teach us, will show us. There's so much that we can begin to understand amen about life in the knowledge of god because he is the author of life he is the author of everything we're trying to know on the human realm all right he is the one he knows all things so so that's why you know somebody like me and of course many others will press into the revelation of Jesus Christ is the key, is the key. When we know God, we know how to operate within the community of the saints, within the community of the church, the body. We know how to live life, amen, within our home, family, marriage, relationship. We know who we are as men, amen, as women, amen. The revelation of Christ brings us into a clearer and a better advanced identity, amen, of our place, of our function in, on earth. Hallelujah. We need to know God that you may know him. Hallelujah. That you may know him better. You may know him better. I also pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know that the eyes, another thing, all right, that enlighten us, but not just to enlighten us, it illuminates our hearts. In fact, that is, that is, this is where, you know, the, the crux of my, of my message this morning is, amen. Something about God illuminating our heart, bringing us to the place where we are being spiritually awakened, amen, through our heart. Heart here, of course, is not talking about, you know, that place where the, your blood pumps. It's talking about, amen, the seat of your spirit. Your heart is the seat of your spirit, all right? The heart is not, it's not the seat of your biology, all right? That's a different heart. The word heart here is talking about the place where spiritual things, amen, gets to grow, develop, where you get to operate, all right? There's a spirit in man. Bible says the spirit of God, amen, instruct him, give him understanding, allow him to deal with issues of life, amen? There is a spirit in you that is that is crying, that is searching, seeking to grow, seeking to develop, seeking, amen, to connect with the things of God, amen? Amen. And you've got to give heed to that cry. You've got to give heed to that hunger, to that longing. All right. But all this begins, amen, in the place of prayer. This is what Paul said. I have not stopped praying. So like I said earlier, when we began, prayer is the vehicle, amen, into this spiritual activity. There's more to prayer than, you know, this little appendix of, you know, of uh, a request that we throw to God. We under we underestimate and we underutilize, amen, that the, 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 the power and and the and the gift of prayer prayer is a gift i mean think about it, it with, without this th thing called prayer nobody will get to grow or know god or understand the things of god yet we are underutilizing this prayer you know we wake up in the morning all somebody's thinking about god give me bread god give me you know <laughs> there's more to that yes god answers in fact the scripture says let's pray father give us our daily bread but that bread amen is beyond just what we eat, amen, and pass out in the toilet. Come on. Jesus said, don't seek for, you know, for this natural bread. He said, he said yes, I fed you yesterday. I'm feeding you again. Now you're coming again for the physical. He said, don't seek for, 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 for just mere fish and bread, all right? You've got to seek for the real bread, the eternal bread, amen. The bread, amen, that when you eat, you never get to, you know, uh, 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 go hungry again. You seek for that your water that you drink that you never get to thirst again, all right? 
Sarah or else we just remain like that woman at the well. Amen. Every time coming to the same old well, amen, seeking, you know, to, to want to fetch again. Come on. This is the time where we can believe God to dig his well in us. Hallelujah. This is the time we can believe God, amen, to deposit his bread in us. We, we, we have to hunger and search for something beyond what men are questing and yearning and pursuing in our day. We have to begin to hear. We have to begin to see. We have to begin to, you know, respond to the call, to the cry of the spirit. This is how we're going to escape amen, the days that we live in. This is how we're going to live above the challenges of our day. This is how we're going to be ahead. All right, Because all we're talking about is how to grow, how to develop, how to be ahead spiritually. And that amen, requires that we become prophetic amen, in our engagement. Prophetic means that you know, you're not living amen, in the same status quo, in the same you know, uh, 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 um, you know, plain that everybody find themselves. Prophetic means you are projecting ahead. Hallelujah. You're seeking. You're seeking that city that is coming. Amen. You're pressing ahead. Amen. You're going ahead of your brethren. Yes, it's called prophetic. They send you ahead like a Joseph. They send you ahead. Amen. Like, like, like David. They send you ahead. You're always ahead in the things of the spirit. Yes, it's difficult. It's lonely. Amen. The path seems amen, uh, 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 uncharted. But yes, that's why it's called the prophetic. Amen. Prophetic is not among the crowd. Whenever you find the prophetic among the crowd is to save them, is to help them, is to restore them, amen, is to revive them, is to feed them. Then you leave them again, hallelujah, you go yonder. That is the call of the prophetic, friends. And that is the call, amen, that we, we, have been, we, have been, we have been initiated into again in this season so that we can give clarity to the people around us. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of panicking out there today, amen, a lot of fear. Come on, you can feel the atmosphere. People are afraid. But guess what? If you rise up in the spirit of Christ, like I said, if you continue to feed on that tree, on that fruit of the tree of life, guess what? You begin to grow in the life of God. What that translates into by now you should know is light. Hallelujah. So when you grow in the light of God, tell me what virus, what disease, what infirmity can come near light. Those things represent darkness. And the Bible says when darkness covers the earth, amen, gross darkness, the people, guess what? That is the time you've got to rise up, amen, because now the light of God is risen upon you. The light of God is coming upon you. That light can be defined as the anointing of God. Jesus said, amen, in, 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 in Luke chapter 4, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of God is light, illuminate. It brightens, hallelujah, the, the, wherever, amen, it's allowed, the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of God is permitted entrance. Hallelujah. He takes liberty. Liberty means it glows. The glory of God begins to radiate. You've got to permit the Lord, amen, to rule, to reign in our life so that his light can shine, so that his light can cover us, so that his light, amen, can be our shield. We can then go out there, hallelujah, and execute the judgment of God that is written. Friends, I want to encourage you this morning that as we look into these principles and we allow the Spirit of God to take us deeper in the speakings of God, amen, we will begin to ascend above the limitations and the challenges of our day, amen, that your portion is not disease, your portion is not sickness your portion is not some virus no that you have a life that is driven by vision remember what i said yesterday or two days ago when we live our life in vision vision protects us vision kept david hallelujah kept joseph amen vision kept moses in the wilderness when you are when your life is driven by vision no weapon no power no spirit no entity no 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 satanic imposition can stop you i'm a man on a vision are you are you a person of vision because if you live by vision vision will sustain you everything that you need hallelujah to fulfill that vision amen is within the vision protection provision hallelujah sustainability amen the right man the right woman the right people the right company everything is within the vision hallelujah your vision streamline your life your vision define and determine hallelujah how far you go where you're going amen the the, the divine you know humility you have the divine protection you have hallelujah, is within the vision that's why you've got to you've got to live your life, amen. Sourcing, you know, you know, uh, fueling that vision daily. Remind yourself of of who you are. 
Remind yourself daily of what you are, what you represent on earth. Hallelujah. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I live this day, amen, in the, in the, in the outflow of the river of God. My life, hallelujah, is sent to reflect the glory of God. I am sent. I'm a sent one. I've been sent with an apostolic grace. I'm going for this day, manifesting the glory of God. Nothing evil can come near my path. And if they come, they will be nullified. For this reason, the Son of Man was made manifest. I've been made manifest for such a time as this to go forth and show forth amen the glory and the praise of God you continue to declare it amen what you say with your mouth amen is what you're gonna have if you don't say it you don't get it hallelujah you declare it watch as you continue to proclaim and declare hallelujah who you are in Christ Jesus that manifestation will continue hallelujah to become real to you not just to you but even to your environment sometimes you may not even see it but guess what as you say it you you you, you're, being, you're being protected. There's a shield. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Lord is a shield to his people. 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 And he watches over us. He who watches over Israel never sleep nor slumber. He builds a wall of protection around us. You may not see it with your physical natural eyes. But that wall is there. As you go, the wall goes with you. Because you're not just going on your own. You're going because you're a saint one. Come on. You understand what I'm saying, friends, this morning? You're going because you're a sent one. All right? Everywhere you go. Amen. Like I shared yesterday, when Paul got to that, you know, island uh, 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 in... Where's that place again when they, when the dock after, the, you know, the, the fish, a uh, uh, shipwreck, all right? And while guiding, you know, wood to just, you know, get some, make some fire. The Bible says he mistakenly picked a snake and the snake bit his hand and the people saw it. They said, ah, now this guy is really a, an evil person. <laughs> Even the evil spirit has pursued him to this place. Now he's going to die. And they watch Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the life of God the life of God is in him all things are of God all things are of God all things are of God the life of God is in him now I see my children playing with this <laughs> button now all right so so what God does is all right he, 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 he expresses his life and his authority through Paul he looked at his hand nothing healed friend the life of god is in you the life of god is in you the life of god is in you the grace of god is in you the glory of god is in you amen the beauty of god is in you and you have to declare you have to proclaim it you have to know who you are don't give don't don't give the enemy room amen don't allow the enemy to stop you to hinder you to frustrate you amen Speak life to yourself, amen. Speak the life that, amen, you have received from the word of God. The word of God is life. Stay on that word until the word comes to life. Paul said, I have not stopped. I've, I've kept praying for you. I've kept praying ever since I heard. I have not stopped. I've kept praying. You've got to continue to pray until that thing comes to life. Until, amen, the juice of that fruit comes to reality. Until the 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 the, 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 the 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 spiritual benefit of the fruit, amen, becomes a reality to you. That is the call, friends. I'm encouraging you this morning. All right. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know him. You may know him and the hope to which you've been called. There's a knowledge, there's a revelation that is coming. From the position of what we are seeking to know in the Lord. This is how we pray, friends. This is how you pray. This is what you pray for. This is what you take, amen, and pray with. You take the word of God and start praying it 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 and start praying it. You take the word of God and start praying that thing until you get the life. Let's look at another scripture before we round up this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I used the scripture a few days ago. A few days ago, we talked about the scripture, but let me just look at it again. Just highlight one or two things, or maybe even fact before we do that. Okay. Thank you, Father. Yes, let's look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 21 and 22. It says, For where your treasure is, I like that. Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. 
Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. What's a treasure? A treasure, of course, you know, is something very precious. All right. Now, script, the scriptures say where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So our heart is always connected to our treasure. In other words, our heart defines to us what is a priority to us. All right. What is a priority is what we seek for, is what we spend our time, our life, all right, to us. Now, the scripture says where your treasure is. We don't know where the treasure is. We don't know. It could be somewhere. God knows where. All right? But the scripture says wherever your treasure is, whatever is treasurable to you, that is where your heart, the heart always moves to us. Amen. The place of your treasure. Now, that is important to the next statement Jesus made. He says, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your vision, because if you look at this scripture, you ask yourself, does it coronate? Is there a connection? Of course, there's a connection. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your vision is clear, amen, your body will be full of light. Treasure to a believer. Treasure to a believer is sourced by vision. Because whatever becomes vision to you or whatever has become vision to you, of course, is your treasure. That's what you live for. And that's where your heart ought to be connected. Yes. That's why for people who have not understood the concept of vision, who don't know why they live life, who don't know why amen, heaven amen, has placed them here on earth, who have no sense of assignment. All right. They become carried away by all kinds of things. They become distracted by all kinds of things because they do not have a treasure. They do not have a treasure. Jesus said to his disciples, he says, he says don't carry bags, hallelujah. Don't carry treasures of bag that can be, you know, that can be destroyed, that can be carried, that, that can be, you know, yes, that can be stolen amen, on earth. He said, don't do that. He said, let your treasure be in the dimension of a life that is heavenly. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. He said, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your, if your vision is clear, your whole body will be full of light. If your vision. Now, I, I, I looked at this a few days ago, and it's amazing what the Lord opened my eyes to see. Where your, where, he said, if your, if your vision is clear, what is your vision? Of course, this word could mean two things. Vision, what you were assigned or what you've been assigned to do. But beyond that, vision, your ability to see into the heart, the mind. In other words, in fact, let's put it this way. Vision, the second definition of vision is your, is your eyes in alignment, in agreement with what the Lord, amen, is seeing. In other words, you can see what God is seeing. Regarding every situation. For that to happen, of course, you have to live in a constancy, amen, of walking with God. Abraham, walk with me and be perfect. Now, if you're walking with God, certainly you begin to see what you see. Because you're moving in the direction to, you know, to, 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 you know, to, is leading. You're not, you're not walking with God. You can't be walking with God and you're in another direction. No, you're walking. So, when you walk in the directions of God, you see what you see. And that is where you develop what is called the burden of the Lord because his eyes will lead you into all kinds of, you know, realities. Oh, the eye is the, is the lamp of the body. If your vision is clear, clarity of vision allow us, amen, to locate, amen, not just our treasure, amen, but the essence and the purpose of the treasure. Then he went further. He said, if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Look at that. If your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, your whole body. So basically, he's not speaking about your physical body because then he went for this. said, if then the light within you is darkness. So which body is talking about? He's talking about the body you cannot see. The body that defines amen, your, your inner world. The body that defines your inner world. If that is darkness, 
if it's being captured, amen, by a soulish, sensual expression and, 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 and motivation. He said, your entire world will be full of darkness, amen. He said, if, if then the light within you is darkness. So this is the, this is a position where deception, amen, becomes to play. Because when you believe that you have light, meanwhile, the light you claim you have is a false light. You say, what do you mean by a false light? Then the Bible says that even Satan himself all right, projects himself amen, as an angel of light. This is, this is serious now. So the enemy amen, can deceive us by giving us false light. Have you noticed that many of the world religion also talk about the light? In fact, the battles of this of this day that we live in, amen, when you talk about the new age, amen, is an expression of light. But this light, amen, is a false light. It's a, it's a light that, in fact, is darkness. But when people look at it, oh, they say it's light. So until we have an, a clear and a better understanding of Christ himself, who calls himself the light, he says, I am the light of the world. And he who follows me will not walk in darkness. So when we are not walking, amen, in the, in the depth of the revelation of who Christ is as the light of the world, we are bound, amen, to embrace darkness. Because listen to this, the deception is that the enemy is going to throw out certain scripture and mix that with all kinds of, all kinds of things. And if we're only looking at the surface, we will be deceived. If the light within you is darkness, how great is the darkness? We don't want to be deceived. So for us not to be deceived, we need to have, amen, a constancy of walk with God. We need to have a constancy of walk with God. Now, how, what do I mean by that? When you walk with God, certain values and character, certain spiritual, you know, uh, 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 understanding and fruits, amen, in terms of the fruit of life, amen, begins to show, begins to manifest through your life. And it's from there that people can indeed see that you're not just talking what you're, what you're saying, amen. You are actually living the life. By this shall men know. Your life start manifesting the fruit. Your life start producing the fruit. But for all that to happen, you have to continue in the place of prayer. Prayer is the source that leads us into that reality where we are connected with the life of God. Father, this morning, we open our hearts, we open our minds, we open our thoughts, we open our desire, our intention, our aspiration, all of this, we lay them down on your altar. And we ask this day that your fire will fall on them, O oh God. Those that are purified belong to you. Those, O oh God, that are consumed do not belong to us. It's your fire that tests the product of our life, that defines what truly is the treasures of our life. There are things that we have embraced as treasure, Lord, that you have discarded and rejected. You say when the fire comes, the fire will test what we are made of. This morning, we ask you this morning, Father, to test us, approve us, find us worthy, O oh God, even as we come before you. We thank you for your grace this morning that is able once again to lift us up and place us, O oh God, among them that are perfect. We pray for your spirit. We pray for your grace. We pray, O oh God, for your love. We pray, O oh God, for your work in us to be complete. Do not stop, O oh God. Like Paul said, ever since I've heard of your faith and your love, I have not stopped praying for you. Father, as we hear, O oh God, of the faith and the love of your people of the same, Lord, Lord, I pray this morning that we will continue to pray. The prayer is, oh God, that we may grow, that we may develop, oh God, in your nature, in your life, in your values, in your character, that Christ, oh God, may be built in us, that his will, his plans, and his purpose may be established in us, that as we go out this day, oh God, our life, oh God, can become even the very enfolgence, oh God, of your very intention in this brand new day. We ask, oh God, that you will lead us, guide us, teach us, oh God. You are our great teacher. You are the rabbi. Teach us. Teach us your ways and we will walk in your truth. Guide us in the path to follow and we will not be deceived. We pray this morning. Open our eyes of understanding. Illuminate us. Once again, we present ourselves to you. Touch us. Incline, oh God, your ears to our declaration that Lord, this morning, our life may synchronize, may synchronize, oh God, 
with your values, with your plan, with your purpose. We don't want to walk outside your ways, outside your will. We don't want something else. No, Christ, it is you that we seek for. It is you that we long for. It is you that we long for. You are, yes, oh God, yes, the desire of the nations. It, it is you that we long for. So may your kingdom come. Rest in us. You are our treasure. You are our home, our eternal rest. We find, oh God, rest in you. You are our Sabbath. We have come into you this morning and we find safety. I bind every heart, every soul, every mind this morning listening, oh God, to this broadcast. I bind them to your will. I declare this morning that we are completely divorced from the ways of the world, from the ways of the flesh. We declare this morning that sin has no dominion over us. We crucify the flesh. We declare that we are alive in Christ this morning. Our life reflects the glory of God, the goodness of God. We pray, may your will, oh God, find inroad, entrance in our lives and through our life. Use us, oh God. We receive the gift of faith this morning. We receive the gift of grace this morning. We receive your mercy this morning. We receive, oh God, wisdom and revelation this morning. We rise up in the name of Jesus from every fear, from every doubt. We rise up. We take our journey in faith this morning. We thank you for you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever imagine or think according to your power that is at work in us. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit, that you will lead us, you will lead us, you will guide us this morning. You will lead our path, you will direct our ears, oh God, to, to listen in response to where you are leading us. You said you will hear a voice behind you, yes, leading you in the path to follow. Lord, we will not follow the wrong path. We will not go the way of the flesh. Lord, you, as you lead us, Father, we will reflect your grace. We will represent, oh God, your eternal glory and power. I thank you for everyone watching this morning. May you continue to bless and increase them. May you continue to guide them in favor. May you continue almighty God to minister life to them. May your word, oh God, continue to guide their path. May hope rise in their heart. May the spirit of joy this morning become their portion. In the name of Jesus, may your peace lead them. In the name of Jesus, may your truth never depart from their lips. May they love, passionately love your word, oh God. May they, oh God, continually, oh God, give in, oh God, into the operations of your speakings, oh God. I thank you, God, for their prophetic character nature this morning that once again has been awakened and quickened by your spirit. Thank you for breathing life upon them. Thank you, God, for their path. Thank you, God, for their way. Yes, almighty God, that produces fruit of righteousness. We thank you. We bless your holy name this morning for what God has begun in you. He will perfect, yes, to his glory. He will perfect for his glory. Father, we thank you. We thank you once again. For the body of Christ all across the world, we pray, lift up your church, oh God, this morning. We pray strength and grace upon your people all across the globe. Those that are weak, those that are fainting, those that are giving up, those that are confused right now, we minister grace to them. We speak life to them. We speak in, in the name of Jesus and awakening of faith this morning. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. I speak life to myself, to my body. I speak grace, strength, oh God. I thank you for renewal. Thank you, oh God, for all that is before us. Thank you, Lord, for the school that we need to start and begin, oh God. In fact, that we have begun. I thank you, Lord, that you will work everything out, oh God. Yes, for your glory. The people will be edified, built, and power by your spirit. I thank you Lord that you will continue to touch my lips. Make my mouth like the pen of the ready writer that I will express, oh God, your prophetic intention for this brand new day. We glorify your name. Thank you, oh Father God, that your word, your word will continue to grow and mightily prevail upon the land. We glorify you for a beautiful day like this. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, bless the Lord for all that we have been able to proclaim this morning. So much has been said in such a short time. Please take time to listen to this word again and again. Amen. Just uh, uh, download them, listen to them. Just let this word drop, amen, life and, and impart something fresh, something new into your spirit, man. This is how we grow in the things of the spirit. Faith comes by hearing. It's important. There's a, there's a reason why faith comes by hearing, amen? Because what you hear, amen, your ears is the gate to your spirit. What you hear will change how you think, how you believe, amen, how you connect with the things of God. Remember that it takes faith to grow and to please God. 
So continue to open your ears to the speakings of God and let God continue to direct and, and lead your path. Thank you everyone this morning for connecting with me. Hope to see you guys um, hopefully today or tomorrow again. We're just trying to fix this network properly and see how things will work out. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.